Welcome to Good Enough with the Trauma Therapist, a podcast dedicated to empowering you to take control of your life, learning valuable strategies for healing and looking at mental health through a trauma-informed lens. Get ready to feel empowered and confident in managing your symptoms. And now, here is your host, licensed clinical social worker, EMDR therapist, and certified clinical trauma professional, Jamie Vomeler. Welcome to Good Enough. I am your host, Jamie Vomeler from Long Island EMDR. Today, guys, we are going to be talking about being in the present moment and why it's important. And in the second half of the show, we'll get into some tips on how to be more present. And when I was talking to Chelsea last week, we were talking about how so many of our clients, you know, because they're dissociative, they go through the motions, right? And they're moving through life from one thing to another, one thing to another, thing after thing, without really being present. They're physically there, but they're not mentally there, right? And I think a lot about this because, you know, life is busy and sometimes it's really hard to be present, especially if we are in that chronic stress mode, right? And if you're not present, you're probably in chronic stress mode. But, you know, if you think about the story of like a mom who is chronically stressed, she multitasks all the time. She is a single mom, so she takes care of her two kids. She goes to work, she cleans the house, she makes dinner, she handles all their activities. Everything is on her, right? She's on a really tight budget. So financially, she's super stressed. She's constantly trying to provide for them. And just every area in her life, she feels like she's coming up short. She never has enough time. And she takes horrible, horrible care of herself. (laughs) And because she's in that constant motion and not really getting anything out of it because she's not there, right? She's physically there, but not mentally there. So it's really hard to be happy and fulfilled and enjoy our life if we're not mentally present, right? That's never going to happen because you're not aware of the beauty that is around you. So because this woman is in chronic stress, you know, she has her kids, she has her job, she has this, uh, the financial stress, you know, and she feels so alone. She's just operating on this autopilot and it, it becomes really hard when we're in that mode to find the beauty, right? So being in the present moment really allows us to live more fulfilling lives, guys. And it's not about ignoring the fact that your life is stressful because for many Long Islanders, we work multiple jobs. We have many kids. It is excruciatingly expensive to live here. And we, we work a lot and we're very, very busy. So we just move from thing to thing to thing to thing. So many of the moms we work with are just like, okay, so my day is I get up, I get myself ready, I get the kids ready, I go to work, I come home, I do the homework, I cook dinner, I put the kids to bed, I give myself a shower, and then I pass out, right? Like it's just boom, 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 boom. And there's moms that also have like, oh, and we go to gymnastics practice and I have to take this one to hockey. And, you know, it just feels like there's never any time to be even present. Right. And what's interesting about that is when we increase our awareness of what's going on right now, like, and for me, being a workaholic, which we've talked about before, like practicing leaving work at work and home at home and having stricter boundaries around when you work and when you don't work. So for me, like as an entrepreneur, most entrepreneurs will tell you we answer our phones all the time, but my staff is pretty well aware that unless it's a crisis, please don't call me if I, if it's a weekend, cause I'm with my kids and I'm fortunate enough that they have other supervisors that they can also call and I can have that boundary, but that boundary allows me to not think about all the stress at work when I'm supposed to be home with my kids and giving them my unconditional attention. And if 
even if my life is stressful, which I've told you guys recently that it's been crazy stressful. This is the most stressed I've ever been in my life. But I find that I'm finding a lot more moments of happiness than I have in the past because I am actively conscious of trying to be more in the moment. So like, for example, just sitting with my son and playing with him and listening to his day and like not looking at my phone, not, you know, trying to multitask and cook dinner at the same time. Like literally like I am sitting down at the table and he has my undivided attention. First off, that's incredibly important for him and his development and his self-esteem. But it's also incredibly beautiful for me because even though work might be stressful and other situations in my life might be stressful, my children are my joy and getting to sit there and, and taking that five minutes to hear about his day and hear his cute little story. Like that is a reason to be happy, right? And I, I'm talking about this because I, we, I've heard from so many people like, I'll be happy when, right? And I really want us all to learn how to be happy no matter what's going on around you. And that doesn't mean you could be happy every second of the day, but you can find those small moments of beauty where in this moment, you know, you're safe in this moment, you know, you can experience joy, even if you're broke, even if, you know, the other circumstances in your life suck, there's always something. My grandma used to say that to me all the time. Give me three good things. It used to annoy the heck out of me, but she's right. There's always something to be grateful for. And we can hyper-focus on all of the things that aren't going well, or we can also choose to find the beauty and enjoy living our lives right now, no matter what's going on, even if we have to create those moments of beauty, right? So being in the present moment, it increases our awareness. It reduces our stress. It enhances our gratitude because we're finding when you're present, you know, life is really beautiful. I was home without the kids the other day and I was on my couch and I heard the birds chirping. So if you don't know my house, there's usually four toddlers running around. So we never hear anything but ah and screaming. It's chaos. So it was just so nice for me that to hear those birds chirping that I literally was like, oh, that feels relaxing. And I went outside with my coffee and I just sat there for five minutes to like, look at the trees and look at the birds and like enjoy nature. Because despite the fact that my life is crazy right now, I do have a lot to be grateful for. And there is so much beauty. Like I, I have a beautiful house. I have a beautiful backyard, you know, where I can actually hear birds. Not everyone even has that luxury. Right? And that is a beautiful thing that I can learn to be grateful for, even if I feel like I'm drowning half the time. Uh, so, and it also, it, being present will allow you to improve your relationships. Like what I was saying with my son, Michael, you know, sitting at the table with him and giving him that five minutes of my undivided attention, not looking at my phone, not talking to someone else, not while I'm also clean, you know, he knows that he is it. I am focused on every word that is coming out of his mouth. It leads to more meaningful connections because I can really I'm really present. So I really know how he's feeling. I'm really paying attention to the words coming out of his mouth. I'm really being thoughtful in my responses, which is going to create a deeper, more meaningful conversation. You know, how many times do we ask our kids, how was your day? And, you know, and a lot of the time guys too, I know it's because you know, they're going to say it's fine. So you're like, there's, I'm going to multitask because there's, they're not even going to answer me. But, you know, if we, really take the time to even practice just sharing our day with them. Like, oh, I was really excited about this. That'll also prompt them to, you know, share more with you because you're leading by that example. And being present also allows us guys to feel more emotionally regulated. And if we go back to that chronic stress, right, and I am in chronic stress right now in my life, I can choose to take that moment to take a breath and regulate myself so that I'm more emotionally managed in that moment, right? And, and make better decisions and focus more and get more accomplished, which is very important for me right now. But being present really does allow for us to be emotionally regulated. And when we're going through the motions and we're not really present, it, it, you know, we're going to be 
on edge and irritable because you're still operating in that chronic stress and your body, your nervous system doesn't know that there's no threat right now. And when you're mindful, even in those, you know, fleeting moments where you're safe, sitting in my house, laying in bed with my kids, I can let my mind wander to all of the things that I need to do tomorrow. Or I could really try to focus in on that experience of holding my kids, how calm they feel, listening to their breathing, you know, just staring at them because they're adorable. And I love my children. They're, they're amazing. Um, you know, it really allows me to feel safe in that moment. Even if, you know, the majority of my day, I felt chronically stressed and overwhelmed in that moment, I know I'm safe in that moment. I know I'm loved. So when we get back from great break, guys, we will talk about how to be more emotionally present. You have been listening to Good Enough. Thank you for listening to Good Enough with a Trauma Therapist. This is your host, Jamie Vomeler. If you live in the states of New York or Missouri, we'd love to work with you. New Yorkers, give us a call at Long Island EMDR at 631 631- 503-1539 or visit our website at liemdr.com. And for those of you living in Missouri, please call Brave Counseling and Psychiatry at 573-825-6441. Visit brave-mo.com. Welcome back to Good Enough. I am your host, Jamie Vomeler, and today we're talking about being present, why it's important and how to be more present in your life. So for those of you that are just tuning in, some of the reasons that being, some of the ways being present can improve your life is by reducing your stress levels, enhancing your gratitude, improving your relationships, allowing you to feel more emotionally regulated. And one I didn't even get into, which I guess I'll get into now is it helps to actually boost your creativity and your problem solving abilities, which makes a lot of sense because when we are in that chronic stress state, again, we don't have access to our logical brains. So our problem solving abilities are probably going to be pretty nil because we feel pretty hopeless and scared and, you know, wanting to either uh, fight, flight, freeze, you know, and when we take that moment to re-regulate our nervous systems, to come back to the present moment. Is there any danger surrounding me right now? If the answer is no, then we can be in a calm body, right? If you are safe where you are right now in this present moment, you can regulate your breathing and get into a calm body. And once you do that, you will have access to that logical part of your brain that can problem solve and come up with creative solutions so that you don't feel so stuck. That's why we're talking about this today. So the first thing that you need to do, and this is what I start with teaching my clients when we're learning to be aware of our body. First thing, regulating your breath, right? Focusing on your breathing, observing all the sensations connected with your breathing, in breath through the nose, on the out breath through the mouth, feeling that air come and go through your body, like learning that flow. It really helps to anchor you to the present moment. And there are all different types of breathing techniques, all different types of strategies. There's the square, which is, you know, a four count, breathe in four, breathe out four, breathe in four, breathe out four. Um, I teach a lot of my clients this uh, hand technique where you put your finger at the bottom of your palm and you trace your fingers up and down. So I go up my thumb, I breathe in, pause, go down my thumb back to the base of my hand, I breathe out. And I trace my whole hands like that. That one actually works a lot better for me because when I am very overwhelmed, I get very frustrated with having to count. (laughs) Um, I don't know why. I guess I just am so regulated that I have no access to a logical brain. But anchoring to my hands and touching my hand and tracing my hand makes me feel more connected to my body and helps me regulate my breathing more and focus more on that breathing. It's about learning that just really showing our body that right now we are entirely safe. In addition to your breathing, guys, engaging your senses. So what do I mean by that? So we have five senses, right? I think you guys all know what those are, but just what I did with the bird, right? Like listening for what is going on around you. So for me that day, I, I heard the birds chirping. 
And because I, I am trying to practice my mindfulness, I went outside so I could feel the sun on my skin, like the warmth of the sun on my shoulders. I could feel the gentle breeze. I could see the, you know, the leaves moving and hear the rustling, like, and really try to soak up every part of being in that moment, right? Because most of the time we're not paying attention to that. Our brains are actually wired for us not to pay attention to that. Imagine if your brain like registered every bit of information coming in <laughs> like that, like over what, like you can't be focused on feeling the sun on your skin and, and while doing all these other things, you know, while having a conversation, while, while really engaging or getting completing tasks in life. But when we're engaging those senses, it really does help us to know that and it helps our brains to know that right now we're safe, you know, you're because you're engaged with your surroundings. You know that you don't hear any threats. You don't see any threats. You don't feel any threats like you can fully understand that you're safe. Um, another practice that you guys can try. And I remember doing this in grad school. It's mindful eating. So. It's probably something I should start practicing because I tend to scoff food, but mindful eating involves eating slowly without distraction. It's savoring each bite, paying attention to the flavors and the textures of your food and just solely focusing on that. You know, if you're, what I'll say to some of my burnt out moms is right, like they'll say, I don't have time to practice mindfulness. Well, if you have a half hour lunch break, you can bring your lunch to your desk and you can practice mindful eating for a half hour and just allow yourself to just fully focus on what what you're eating, what it tastes like, what it feels like, how full you feel, you know, what's what's going on in your body. That is an act of mindfulness. And you don't have to do that even for the full half hour. Girl, do it for like five minutes. That's great. But we can find time. Another way to be more mindful, guys, is to limit our multitasking. <laughs> and for a lot of us, that's really hard. I know I'm a crazy multitasker, um, but there's actually plenty of studies that show that you get more accomplished when you focus on one task at a time, probably because you're devoting all your attention to it and all your energy to it. And you can be more efficient with that time, right? That makes a lot of sense. But when we feel stressed, we try to do 5,000 things at once. And then I think that also is what contributes to that feeling of not meeting the mark and not being enough. Because since we are pulled in so many different directions and so scattered, it's like everything is getting done, but not up to the standard that we would like. So if we just focus on each task and completing that task and giving it our full attention, we're going to have a deeper understanding of what we need to do um, and get it done more quickly and more to our standards because we understand it better because we're giving it that full attention. Um, my, like learning to be, to accept the present moment for whatever it is, like it, it just em embracing it. You know, sometimes I think the hardest part of mindfulness for me and my, my journey towards becoming mindful, cause I certainly was not most of my life, um, is sitting with the hard feelings, sitting with that feeling of anger, sitting with that feeling of sadness. Like me and Chelsea were talking about last week, there's different parts of ourselves and different emotions are going to come up for you. And an act of mindfulness can just be sitting with that sadness or that anger, that fear, frustration, and trying to find out the why, you know, just, or, and, or just sitting with it and being like, yeah, I have every right to be angry right now and accepting it and providing yourself with that compassion of like, yeah, you know, sometimes people suck and I have every right to be angry. Um, sometimes if we just acknowledge our feelings, they go away more quickly because <laughs> if we know we're right to be angry, like my next, my next line of thought would probably be like, yeah, I'm not going to allow them to keep me in this state. So I'm going to release that anger for me, not for them because they're not worth my anger. They're not worth my time. They're not worth my rumination. Right. Um, but sitting with that for a minute can help us really to accept where we are and practicing gratitude, 
right? So many of my clients that get caught up in that negative mindset where they don't feel grateful or they feel like everything is falling apart in your life. One of the things I love most about EMTR and doing it with my clients is when they go into those negative memories, they also remember a lot of the strengths and the supports and the the ways in which they survived that were really quite beautiful or that were really quite meaningful or inspiring. And they can find the beauty uh, in that. So when we're looking at our lives and we can learn to find, no matter what the situation, even if it's your worst experience, a couple things to just be grateful for. You know, my grandma used to always say, if I couldn't come up with one thing, her first one would always be, you woke up today. Be grateful that you woke up today. You know, be grateful that you have food in your stomach. Be grateful that you are able-bodied and able to go get another job if you lost your job. Be grateful, you know, that you have the support system to take you in if you have to move back in with your parents. (laughs) You know, there's, if we reframe and learn to come from a place of acceptance and gratitude, we will just feel so much happier. So you've been listening to Good Enough with Jamie Vollmuller. And I want to remind you guys that you are good enough. Thank you for listening to Good Enough with the Trauma Therapist. We appreciate you listening. While our host may provide some personal and professional advice, we want to remind you that this show is for entertainment purposes only. Each individual situation is unique, and Good Enough is not a substitute for mental health treatment. If you need a therapist and are located in New York or Missouri, feel free to reach out to us at liendr.com or brave-mo.com.